Hello, Danny Blythe here with a very quick overview of the coronavirus and traditional Chinese medicine. And this was part of a lecture I gave my friend Greg Lampert at the end of March on using nutrition to boost up your immune system. Let's pause and read this. This is absolutely only for acupuncture students or practitioners. And this is not for the general public. In terms of Chinese medicine, this is a warm disease, a wumbing or a scourge epidemic. Um, why is it? Because there's fever present in almost all cases. It invades via the nose and mouth, and it's a strong epidemic and contagious pathogenic factor. So if we look at the history of this, it was talked about in the Han Dynasty. Then Aging talked about warm disease, and the Pulse Classics talked about um, scourge epidemics. During the Ming Dynasty, there were lots of plagues and very high mortality rates and then later during the Qing they started using different methods of treating these epidemics. So Wu Youke talked about pestilential qi um, and he talked about it not being internal or external but being in the Mo Yuan, the membrane source. So he said when it got locked in the membrane source you couldn't really treat it um, but you waited until it became either an external or an internal condition and then treated it. And he devised a formula for treating the membrane source. You know, a bit later on, um, Ye Tian Shi developed the four levels and his students wrote it down. And a little after that, uh, Wu Zhu Tong discussed epidemic diseases in terms of the three burners. And he came up with formulas like Yin Chao San and Sang Ju Yin. So the four levels are Wei, defense, Qi, the secondary defense, Yin, nutritive level, and blood level. So the nature of a pathogen, Xie Qi, is it tends to penetrate deeper into these levels. And our Zheng Qi, our upright Qi, wants to throw the pathogen up and out. So we look at symptoms, we've got fever, dry cough, tight chest and shortness of breath. If we want to dry something, we think about wind, and we think about heat, like the perfect day for drying washing or how we dry our hair. Also think of obstruction, so obstruction especially caused by damp and phlegm, but also to some degree qi and blood stagnation, wind and cold. So we have the drying action of wind and heat and the obstructing of damp. So giving us symptoms like fever, dry cough, shorts of breath, sore throat, and all the damp obstruction. So this can be in the muscles with fatigue and the lungs with sputum, also in the digestive system. This is being described as a damp pathogen. So damp is very predominant in early stages of this current condition. So at this stage, we want to release the exterior and transform damp. Unknown amount of people, this is very mild, uh, wind, very few symptoms, and for most people it's fairly typical cold with congestion, sore throat, dry cough. For some it becomes a severe disease and obviously as we're finding out for, for a small percentage of critical disease. Major penetration is the qi level, so here we get the four bigs, sweating, fever, thirst and pulse. At this level we're not releasing the exterior anymore, we're clearing internal heat and draining downwards. And we can see this in the lung with this persistent cough that's going on as a manifestation of damp and heat in the lungs. We can see this in the spleen and stomach with tidal fever and digestive symptoms. And we can sometimes see this in Shaoyang level, gallbladder level. What I've seen quite a bit of is especially these as a lingering pathogenic factor after a moderate bout. Penetrating to the yin level, we start to see injury to the yin and fluids and disturb shen. So we get a high fever that's worse at night, dryness, insomnia, mental restlessness. This can become dangerous at its, this stage. Penetrate the pericardium or create internal wind. And at the blood level with uh, rashes, a very high fever, which is what we seem to be seeing in some of the young children that are getting it. But who are vulnerable? Well, the main vulnerable group are the elderly, but also people with low immune system, heart disease, diabetes, chronic lung disease, cancer, hypertension, obesity, neurological disease. So what are we talking here with these 
vulnerable groups. For the elderly, we always think of kidney deficiency, um, but even more so blood stagnation. So blood stagnation is what typifies aging process. And to some degree, lung and spleen chi deficiency. You have to think that the lungs lose about 10% of their capacity roughly every decade after the age of about 50. And also a chronic build-up of damp heat like we see in diabetes, autoimmune diseases and phlegm. So being overweight, being obese. So we're looking at also um, generalised weak chi in the immune compromised so these are the things that we want to be focusing on in terms of keeping ourselves healthy. Looking at these figures from Italy, a very large percentage had one, two or three chronic illnesses that passed away with coronavirus. Thanks for listening.